Taking problems and worries to bed is a huge issue. If there's something on your mind, then you automatically take it with you wherever you go. But one place you certainly do not need to be distracted from getting what you want is in the bedroom, especially when you want to sleep. The idea is to train your subconscious mind that your bed is for sleep. And the more you go to bed at the right time, just with the intention of sleeping, everything becomes easier for you. How to have the perfect night's sleep. I cannot stress enough how truly important sleep is. Sleep affects every single process in our bodies, from physical to mental. Even our metabolism, risk of a disease, and ability to fight a disease is connected to sleep. When we are sleeping, we appear to be dead to the world, when in actual fact our brains are working overtime, like night workers in a supermarket preparing everything for the next day. In fact, sleep is so important that when we change our sleeping patterns, it can be detrimental to our health. And that is one of the reasons why there has been research into the necessity of putting our clocks forward to save daylight. Because when we do this, there are more accidents all over the world due to fatigue. Poor sleep has been linked with depression, anxiety, and many similar conditions. People who do suffer from anxiety, depression, and other conditions similar, also find it difficult to sleep and the lack of sleep then makes the conditions even worse, creating a very vicious circle. We need sleep to recharge our batteries, to rest our mind and our muscles too. So if you have a lot going on, and also your sleep is not great, then life really can be even more difficult. Like I said, a bad sleep harms physical and mental health. We can't function properly. We are slow, moody, and unhappy without a good sleep. So what can we do to ensure a better night's sleep? In this video, I'm going to cover the things that can affect your sleep negatively and talk about the solutions. Firstly, maybe the bedroom is not dark enough, perhaps. There's nothing worse than trying to get to sleep and it's too light, either from a light from the hallway or through the window from the street. It's easy to solve the hallway problem by closing the door, and a great idea to block out any light from the street or the garden would be to invest in some blackout curtains. This way, if you have to sleep in daylight hours due to work reasons or any other reasons, it will be like you are trying to sleep in the middle of the night. Problem solved. Is the bedroom quiet enough? If not, then invest in some earplugs from the pharmacy immediately. It could even be that you get to sleep perfectly, but then the slightest noise wakes you up. I've actually personally been using earplugs for the last 10 years, and so whenever I go, I never get disturbed by any noises. And for me, this was actually revolutionary. I cannot recommend them enough. When I first bought some, I ordered a selection from Amazon and then tried them all out. I picked my favorite, ordered about 200 pairs of them, and I put them all in the side drawer of the bed. The bedroom must be a decent temperature. You must be comfortable. Research says that the perfect temperature for your bedroom when you're sleeping is around 60 to 70 degrees. Everybody is different though. Personally, I'm a very hot person, so I can get to sleep quite easily in cooler temperatures. The most important thing is to make sure that you are comfortable, not too hot, not too cold, using adequate blankets, electric blankets, radiators, or anything else that you may need. What about the time you go to bed and the time you wake up? Is it all a mess? Our bodies are like machines, machines of habit. The subconscious mind thrives on patterns and habits. To work best with the subconscious mind, we must try to go to bed at the same time every night and then get up in the morning at exactly the same time too. Repetition is key to building a new habit and a new behavior. So the more you do it, the easier it becomes. Your body prepares yourself for sleep subconsciously without you even realizing, and then before you know it, it's easy. Next one up, are you taking any distractions in the way of electronics to bed with you? Do not take laptops, phones, electronic tablets, or anything else to bed with you. All of these devices have backlights and even if you dim them down, they still cause negative effects to your eyes and your brain when it comes to trying to get to sleep. Not only that, but you're mixing in your mind about the place where you should be sleeping and doing other things, and this is no good for the subconscious mind. The idea is to train your subconscious mind that your bed is for sleep, and the more you go to bed at the right time, just with the intention of sleeping, everything becomes easier for you. Some people take their work to bed with them, Again, you must never mix anything other than sleep with your bed. If you consciously take your work to bed, whether it be phone calls, emails, or even just thinking about work, then you disrupt the whole process of winding down and going to sleep. 
The moment you enter the bedroom with the intention to go to bed and to sleep, you must change your mindset and prepare yourself for the job at hand. Cluttering your mind with thoughts from the day like work will do you no favors. Do any pets disturb your sleep? Whether it's a man's or a woman's best friend or the household cat, if they disturb your sleep, then you need to solve this problem. If you must have them in your room, then they need to have their own bed, perhaps. Pets can be very loving. They need attention and warmth from their owner. But if that's you and it's affecting your sleep, then you need to take action now. And to help any guilt, remember, as the animal gets older, it will be safer for them to have their own place in case you roll over onto them anyway. Taking problems and worries to bed is a huge issue. If there's something on your mind, then you automatically take it with you wherever you go. But one place you certainly do not need to be distracted from getting what you want is in the bedroom, especially when you want to sleep. A fantastic idea is firstly to journal. So you can put all your emotions and your feelings, thoughts and worries, including problems, all down on paper. And this has an amazing effect on your mind as you can start to see things differently. If you have something that is really playing on your mind and you do need to think about it, then another idea is to actually book a time in your diary for you to return to this thought. For example, you could set aside 30 minutes one morning when you really are free to focus all your attention on this issue and more importantly, the solutions to the issue. This way, you can let go of the thought knowing that you're not just forgetting about it, you're actually going to give it the time it deserves at a more appropriate time. Next, we've got alcohol consumption. Drinking alcohol certainly does knock you out, but it's not the kind of sleep that you need. Often due to alcohol consumption, we have very interrupted sleep. And due to all the liquid that's been drunk, we also need more visits to the toilet for even more interrupted sleep. If you're going to drink alcohol at all, it should be many, many hours before you go to sleep. Getting a good night's sleep is absolutely imperative. I've helped so many people over the years get their sleep patterns back to normal with my hypnotherapy audio, Better Sleep. It's easy to listen to, relaxing, and does exactly what it's meant to. To find out more, simply click the link below. From all of us here at New Mindset Hypnotherapy, we hope you have a wonderful day, and thank you so much for watching.